Welcome back to the Chatters Box. My name is Kyle McClellan. I am your host of the new podcast of the St. Louis Cardinals, and we are doing part two of the Albert Pujols series. And Albert, thanks so much for stepping back into the Chatters Box. So last time we talked about the early Albert back growing up in the Dominican, what that was like. Now we're going to dive into uh, the Albert Pujols that everybody knows. And we we left off with your your first spring training with the Cardinals, and that's exactly what we're going to pick up today. All right, we're going to jump right back into episode two. So episode one, we talked early Albert. We mm -hmm. talked growing up in the DR, um, you know, coming over here, your early years in the minor leagues and what that was like. We left off uh, literally your first spring training with the Cardinals. So uh, I want to jump right back into there. You have a monster year in mm -hmm. your one year as a, minor, as a minor league player. You come into that spring training. I want to know your mindset when you're coming in there you 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 think you're making the team uh, like what, what's your mindset there not really I think uh you know for me it was kind of like you know I mean one year in the minor league you know back then 22 years ago you don't see a lot of players just jumping right away the next year in the big leagues I mean right now you know 10 years or 15 years later guys spend one or two months in the minor league <laughs> and they get called up <laughs> to the big leagues you know which is good I mean I think if you're ready to play in and this gang in the big leagues, uh, you know, good for you. Right. But I think, you know, back then it was really difficult. So for me, it was just really uh, to get that opportunity uh, to ask a lot of questions, to be around some of the best players in the game uh, and just kind of pick their brain. You know, you're talking about Gene Emmons, Mark McGuire, you know, Fernando Viña, Edgar Renteria, Placido Polanco, and the list goes on and on, Mike Martini. Um, you know, Matt Morris, so Daryl Kyle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those guys, you know, were really mentor to me, especially early in my career. So to be able to be there, you know, after one year in the minor league and kind of get rewarded for the year that you had and kind of like invited me. And they didn't have to do that, but they, they wanted to see, you know, um, you know, kind of like reward me for. And, and I just went and I didn't thought that I was going to have that many are bad to tell you the truth. I yeah. thought like the first cut, I was gonna be gone. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm being honest to you, but yep. obviously that wasn't the case. Uh, Bonilla got hurt early, and you know they give me opportunity, and every time they give me an opportunity, whether it was a pinch hit here or starting a game here and there, you know I was always taking advantage. I was had probably I probably had the best spring training of my career. Well, maybe in 2012 I had a pretty good spring training with the Angels too, but. I think it was one of the best spring training of my career. You know, I think I got close to 70 or air bats or 60 or 70 air bats, something that I wasn't going to be able to get if I go back to those numbers. But uh, I would just pinch hitting, hitting homer, hitting doubles, and just have good quality air bats, you know, and just enjoying the game. And I think that kind of changed the mindset uh, of them and the way that they were looking at it. And, you know, Bonilla's getting her kind of opened the doors. Yeah for myself, you know, to make the ball club. So when did it hit you that, like, I got a chance? You know, because I, I put myself in your shoes. I, I came in in a spring training, mm -hmm. and I had no chance of making the team, right? I'm coming in trying to make my name and try to just say, hey, I'm here if you need me. All of a sudden, I get about halfway through, and I, I'm throwing to Yachty. Like, Yachty's staying in the game to catch me. Mm -hmm. You know, and you start to see, like – Things aren't accidental in spring training, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, you start to see you matchups. Know, you, you know, you smell it. You know, like, when they start mixing you and, like, mm -hmm. putting you more with the group that you belong. So I think for me, uh, I, I would say I think maybe three or four weeks into camp, two weeks before we we, bro we broke camp, I think uh, that's when I knew that I probably had a pretty good chance maybe to squeeze and make that ball club for – maybe two or three weeks until Bonilla was right. coming back from the DL. Uh, never expected that I was going to be up here, you know, the whole time in 2001. But, you know, God had a better plan for me, I guess. And, you know, part of that was me putting the hard work into, you know, and never take anything for granted. Although I was having a great spring, I still showing up early, leaving late, asking the right question, working on my defense, working on the things that I had at work. And, and Tony saw that, the Walt Jokri saw that, and they decided to give me a shot. And the older players saw that too. Like, explain to people that spring mm -hmm. training process, because I, I always try to tell people, like, as a young player, 
you, this might be your only chance in the major league locker room, mm-hmm. right? I mean, like you said, most most kids come in expecting that first cut. They're mm-hmm. going to get sent down to minor league camp. So you have two weeks mm-hmm. to, to learn from the best, right? But you also, there's that fine line of, I, I don't want to ask too many questions. I don't want to yeah. annoy them. I don't want to bother them. You know, I don't want to get in their way. Mm-hmm. But spring training is a really unique opportunity where the older guys understand their role. Mm-hmm. And, and and help those young guys because they know it might only be the two weeks as well, but it might help those guys in their minor league career, or, you know, exactly. hopefully be teammates later. Explain exactly. that a little bit. You, you hit it right. And I think uh, for me, it was being around the Latin guys, you know, it helped me out a lot. I was, you know, early in my career, I have, you know, really, really good guys, uh, you know, especially in front of the Latin side. But then the American side, you know, you have a guy like Jing M and my wire, you know, guys that remember my wire just came from, you know, two years before, you know, kind of bringing baseball back, mm-hmm. hanging Sosa, mm-hmm. you know, with all the home run records and all that. So at the end of the day, and somebody that later on became my hitting coach, and we pretty much really close friends. Um, I can say he's like my bigger brother, mm-hmm. you know, that I don't have. So, um, yeah, but, you know, spring training is that. You get in there for maybe a week or two, then you just try to observe everything, take advantage, learn as much as you can, and, Make the impression that if somebody get hurt, you'll be the first guy, you know, to get called up. And and that was it for me. I think it was like, you know what? I knew that I probably was going to start in AAA maybe and or double A, who knows, because I just went from A ball all the way to AAA in one year. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I... I really just want to make that impression there. And that's what I told Tony. I'm like, I'm here, you know, just to have a great spring, to learn, to observe, and, and see what the big leagues is all about, being around big league guys, and really learn as much as I can that when something happened during the course of the season, I want to be that guy no yep. matter where I am to, to be called up. So I want to make that impression. That was it. And and you, you're right. I mean, you start seeing, you know, they start missing you with the guys that belong, and then – Guys that start believing in you, you know, Maguire, Jimmy, you know, my Morris, you know, Martini, those guys really had a really big impact because they're like, hey, this kid can help us out right now. You know, like, there's no way, there's no waste of our time. And I think that kind of put the pressure on Wall and that kind of put the pressure on, on Tony. Yeah, I, I remember when I made the team, uh, I went over to Russ Springer, who was my, he was mm-hmm. my guy from day one. And, uh, and, and, Dave Duncan had told me while I was playing catch on the line, and he said, and, and I, it wasn't real clear. It wasn't like, hey, you made the team. It was like, you're going with us. And I'm like, what does that mean? Because we're playing a scrimmage game. And so I wasn't yeah. really sure. And people started congratulating me. I went and told Russ, and I said, hey, I made the team. We were doing, like, infield stuff. And he goes, I knew two weeks ago. He yeah. goes, why do you think I've been, you know, strategically coming over and asking you questions? And and so Tony did rely on those older guys, mm-hmm. and Tony wanted those older guys to say, Hey, this is a guy we want to take because he Tony put a lot of faith in his older guys to run that locker yeah, room, right? You're right, and and that was that's was the best on Tony, man. Like obviously you were part of those ball club that man, he all he cares about is writing the lineup, asking him to play hard. Things that were going in the locker room, it was our locker room. We take care as a as a veteran guys, as a young guys. If he things get offline, like and you know that he knew that if he get offline and I can't, we can't control it, then he takes over. But he respect us a lot. Um, he he leaned to their players. Uh, yeah, you know, for your input. for for yeah. our input. You know, a lot of those guys. You know, especially in, in oh, 06 and 11, you know, some of the guys that helped us out to win a championship, he asked me, you know, hey, what do you think about mm-hmm. this guy? You think that he can help us out? And it, it, that that means a lot, you know, uh, as a player, you know, that you have your manager, you know, kind of like leaning on you and have your back. And, man, it makes you feel really, really special. So, and I think, you know, uh, that's the relationship that I have 20 years later with yeah. Tony, you know, he's like a dad to me and, and not just Tony, well, Joker too. I mean, Dave McKay, you know, who yep, yep. we just saw him last week mm-hmm. here when they came through. I mean, uh, Duncan, you know, whenever I see him, just big hug and just talk about it. I mean, it's Barry Weinberg, you know, who was our training. I got the chance to go to dinner and spring training. It's like, you know, it's really special. We look at only the aspect of winning a championship, man, but the relationship, as you know, that you built is really special. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we're all going to take this jersey out and we're going to walk away. But what we can take for us is the success and the memories, you know, and the relationship that you built 
And that to me is more special than anything that we accomplish in the field. Well, and I love that, you know, you're recognizing that it's not just you that did everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many, the trainers that got of you course. ready to go, the coaches that poured into you and gave yeah. you the knowledge that you needed to go out and be successful. You were a big part of it, obviously. Of but course. But without that support system, you're, exactly, you're not where you are. Exactly. And uh, that support system that helped me out to to be who I am and yeah. become the player that I that I become. I mean, when inviting title, championship, MVP. I mean, if I can tear those pieces and, and give everyone, I, I would in a heartbeat, mm -hmm. you know, because those people, you know, players in front of me, players behind me, they drove me in. So, you know, it's just a lot of things that have to go your way, you know, but then you need to be willing to accept it, your role and, and really take advantage. And that's something that I always have done. So your first year, you make the team. How'd, how'd they tell you, you made the team? Is there a cool story that goes with that? Um, Actually, what's... I, I don't know if a lot of people know this. I share a couple of times. But when uh, Thursday end, you know, all spring training, like I was, you know, my whole spring training, I was really sharing a locker room with Gene Est 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 Okay. Um, it was way before you. It was mm -hmm. a really right-hander guy, nasty sinker. He he made it to the big leagues too later on. But he was one of the big prospects for the Cardinals. And we used to share a locker room. As soon as we walk in, as you know, like towards the right, that's where all the rookies are yeah. towards the left. It's so when you say share a locker, you mean like literally share literally a locker? Literally share a locker room, So yes. your cleats and his cleats are in the yes. same room. So it says like, what number yeah, are we in spring 68, training? 68, I mean. 68. <laughs> yeah. I was 68 too. That's a good number. So that's 68. That's a good number yeah. because I heard a lot of those Chris guys. Chris Duncan too. Yeah, a lot of guys that wore that number may yeah. have made it. Yeah. Like, so so 68 crazy. slash like 91. You guys yeah, are literally in the was, same So okay. that was it. And I think he was... Was he trying he to was, take your your shoes or anything? He was or? actually <laughs> in, uh, he was actually a, a, a lower number than me because he was a big prospect in this organization. So, um, but yeah, it was it was you know it was uncomfortable, but it wasn't <laughs> you know because like hey, what you in the show? What, yeah, yeah. What do you expect? You yeah. know, just just enjoy. If you don't and, like it? Get to the other side of the locker room. So. <laughs> So to get to the story, so, you know, one week or maybe 10 days left uh, before spring training, you know, last cut pretty much. And, you know, I was the last one pretty much in that right side. And my locker wasn't there anymore. He, They already sent Jim down, so everybody. And I was the only guy in that, maybe one or two guys, but uh, if I can recall. But my locker room wasn't there anymore. I was like... Okay, and then I walk into Tony's <laughs> office, and Tony was sitting there. He's like, I knock, and he's like, Hey, yeah, what's up, Albert? And in Spanish, he's like, Dime caballo, what's what happening? And I was like, Hey, I just wanted to thank you. I uh, wanted to give you, you know, just thank you for the opportunity. I really enjoyed, you know, my time here. I, uh, you know, I learned a lot. And he's like, kind of looking at me like with this weird face, you know, like, what is, what are you talking about? And like you know, it was awesome. I, I enjoyed my time. I learned so much from Mark and all the guys, the veteran guys. I love the way they embraced me. I hope I made a good impression. So whenever you need me, you know. So he let me talk like for five <laughs> minutes, but then I, I. At the end, he's, like, looking at me and, like, look at his face and, you know, like, something's going on. But I didn't, you know. And he was, like, so after I was done, after five minutes, he was, like, why are you saying all this? I was, like, well, because I got sent down. And he was, like, who sent you down? <laughs> and he was, like, well, my locker is not there. So he jumped out of his chair, you know, where his office yeah, was. Yeah. So he turned right right away. And, well, I said, that was my first rookie mistake. My locker, because I was one of the last one, was moved between Edgar Enterilla and Placido Polanco. And I was sitting next to them on the left side. I never looked uh -huh. to that side because I was like, there's no way I'm yeah. going to be on the left side. Well, as a rookie, you can't be walking around like on that side. No, being no, like, where's no, my I mean, locker? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So my locker was there, and, you know, it was, it was, just, it was just crazy, dude, like... So that's you know. when you realized so, he takes no, you in there. No, no, yeah. So I really, that's when I like, you know, he was like, no, you, you, you know, they just. So he called Buddy Bates and he was like, Buddy, Buddy Bates, come here. Where's Albert Locker? And like, Tony, right there. We just move him because we didn't want him to be <laughs> by alone by himself <laughs> over there. We want him to feel like part of the team. I was like, well, that's awesome. So I stick up with them more. And I was like, I play. So there comes like. Probably the last three games was spring training. You know, Tony put me in left field. I made some good plays. 
Then I made the last trip of spring training, who, which, which it was in Orlando. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the two game trip we went out there. And he didn't play me that day. And we went extra innings. And the whole reason he played me because I, one of our pitcher had to go hit. <laughs> <laughs> and and but he his goal was and he tells me this his goal was like hey you know we were gonna send you down and bro I came as a pinch hitter down by one run and I took the closer deep from the brace and tied the game bro and he was like I guess my wire the story of my wire he was sitting next to my wire hitting with his elbow <laughs> like this and his rib cage he's like I told you we need to take this kid he's gonna help us out. So I still didn't know, you know, then they say, hey, you know, the next day we play the last game. And then on, on Sunday, I believe we were flying out to to Oakland and Seattle to play our exhibition game. And they just say, you know, you're going to come to to play the exhibition games, you know, with us. But we don't know if you're going to make the team. But I think <laughs> like the experience that you had, there's some yeah. of the veteran guys already yeah, knew it. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't really know even the Latin guy. They didn't even give me a glance, man. They didn't give me a clue. Like they're like, they probably knew like a week before yeah. uh, than me. And I find out really after our our last game, bro, in Seattle, our last exhibition game. And my family sent me a bunch of tests saying congratulations. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because you know you had to put the roster in or whatever yeah. for opening day. I'm like, what what are you talking about? And they told me in Seattle that I was gonna make the team, but. You know, Tony say, hey, we're going to take you. It'll be probably a week yep. uh, because Bonin is coming out of the DL and, you know, he's ready to go. And, you know, a week's turned into 22 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a long week. Yeah. So, okay, so you make the team. Now that's a different mindset, right? Because yeah. you don't want to go back. Exactly. Right? So I remember for me um, – a very similar situation where like I, I wasn't supposed to make the team. I ended up making a couple injuries and I remember making it and um, Kelvin Jimenez was coming off the deal in two weeks. And I was like, I got two weeks. Mm -hmm. I got two weeks to move myself up the depth chart so that somebody else will go instead of me. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a fight, right? I mean, it's like yeah. everything you can do. And like you said earlier about those opportunities, when you get the opportunities, being ready to take them and show, you know, you had a great year the year before you had a great spring training. So you had to have some momentum going into that thinking like I belong here right yeah. and and then you get the opportunity and so how'd you fare in the first week exactly and I think part of that for me was the group that we have man and the veteran guys I mean those guys were so great to me and really made me comfortable and made me like hey you belong here mm -hmm. this is you know I know that we you can help us out and I think you know that ha had a lot of impact uh you know in my in my success my rookie year I believe uh, but I, you know, I went one for seven in Colorado. I was in the opening lane, day lineup, uh, hitting seventh. Um, basically, my my second about well, my first about almost went deep uh, <laughs> against uh, Mike Hampton uh, in Colorado. Then my second about hit a base hit up the middle. Then I believe I I walked so one for three, and then I tired one for seven. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in that series in Colorado. Then when we Went to Arizona. That's when I started tearing it up. Uh, you know, we're facing Randy Ronson. You're <laughs> facing Kurt Schilling, Armando Reynoso. I went deep on Friday. I took Armando Reynoso deep for my home run. Then facing Randy Johnson the next day, I think I hit a double my first bow off the wall with bases loaded. Then another big nuts. Like, I have, like, in that series, I went, like, probably 8 for 12 or 13 and with two homers and, like, uh, six or seven RBI, I think. Um, and that's that's the like so that was kind of like the uh, like okay this kid is for real yeah. because you know you're we facing, can't send him down you know what i mean right. you're right. getting chilling then you're mm -hmm. getting randy johnson and he's not and scared you know, exactly yeah and then you mm -hmm. come over here opening day again my first arbat went deep you know and my first gang as a uh, uh, here as a cardinal i'm like you know i had a great series once again against uh, i think it was colorado too and man, it was just, it just never, like we always talk, that opportunity, man, yeah. just hit that gas and just really don't let up and just until somebody tells you so. And, you know, it was become a rookie, end up winning a rookie of the year <laughs> that year and big numbers. And, but, you know, all that, man, and all that success for me always have been like, 
I always wanted to get better, you know, and better and better. And one next year was even better. And the year after that, I went inviting title and then all four and finally winning MVP in all five. But like always getting better and never really felt comfortable, I guess. And even 22 years later for me, like, you know, a veteran guys, I still showing up early. I still yep. do my hard work. I mean, because um, I never want to feel comfortable, bro until I'm, I'm done playing baseball. Uh, and I think part of that is the respect, uh, the honor that I have for my God, you know, for the Lord that gave me the opportunity, and the organizations that I have uh, represent that I respect. You know, you have to respect that, honor for, that uniform, and you have to wear it with pride. And I think uh, those are the things that I learned really early in my career and was able, was able to help me out to how this is that I have. So what about playing different positions? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you come up and they're like, hey, you're going to left field. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, I got to figure yeah. that out. Like, you know, they always say if you can hit, they'll find a spot for exactly. you. Like, how difficult was that in the big leagues? I mean, you know, anybody thinks it's easy to go out there and catch a fly ball. It's yeah. not. It's, <laughs> it's not, it's not well, easy. Well, I look, I, I look Juan Jeppe right now, and it's almost yeah. like looking at myself, right. you know, 22 years ago, him mm -hmm. being the first base, third base, outfield, you know, I mean, if you can hit, yeah, you they find a way to play you everywhere. Uh, but I think uh, once again, I had two great outfielders, JD Drew. You know, Gene Emmons probably the best outfielder that I've already played with, and man, he helped me so much. The, talking about somebody that was gifted, there's Jimmy. Yeah, how shallow he used to play, how he used to see the sign, how he used to tell me, "Hey, move this way to step, to step to the." I mean, it was just crazy, man. And that allowed me to to be a, a decent outfield. When I was out there, I felt comfortable right away, um, you know, because who I have in yeah. center field, and that was Jimmy, you know. Plus, he used to cover a lot of ground himself, too. So a lot of credit goes to Jimmy, you know, for helping me out along that way. But, um, you know, I was just happy of being up here. I didn't care. I didn't care where I hit in the line. Oh, I started hitting seventh opening day, and by the third week, I was already hitting behind my wire, hitting fourth. So, um, you know, I really, really just enjoy being in the line every day and and having one goal in mind, like I always had, and that was helping this organization to win every night. So, you know, you got McGuire, you got Edmonds, you got, you know, some of these guys. Scott oh, Rowland ends got, up coming. You got Matheny. Oh, you, got you got Ray Lamford, too. Ray Remember, Lamford. Ray Lamford yeah. was here. Yeah. You know, Ray Lamford was our, our left fielder. Then, you know, then you had Jimmy was a center. Then you have Mark at first. Then you have uh, J.D. Drew at right. Then I played third. And then when Ray wasn't in the line, oh, then I played left field and Polanco was a uh, third base and Greg Paquette mm -hmm. was, uh, and then you got Binia in second, then Renteria is short, and Martini was a shortstop, and then we have Matt Morris, uh, Daryl Kyle were our ace, uh, you know. So, but you mentioned, you know, some of the other guys that kind of got, came to our organization. Well, it was so good that some of those leaders that helped me out on the way, they start leaving, and then we get the guys like Woody Williams, mm -hmm. Reggie Sander, Larry Walker, and Tony Walmack, you know. Yep veteran guys there they're being around and they were they knew how to win the win games when they know, all fit winner. that mold right exactly. and that, that's my question is like you you had these guys that were willing to pour into you do you think you would be different if those guys were cold to you and let you do your own thing you think you would have taken that kind of like oh that's the way it's supposed to go or do you think um, that didn't have a, an influence on the way, you know, that you look after guys and take guys in? I believe so. I think guys had really big influence in, in, in all the players. Uh, but once again, it goes by, you know, that players that you try to help. Yeah. Is he willing to open, right. you know, right. his door? Is he willing to be flexible to to get help, you yeah. know? And you got to earn it. Exactly. Yeah. And I think for me, having those guys around, and I remember – DK, I mean, Daryl told me, it's like, don't be afraid of making the all-star team, <laughs> you know, right before I got in that bus in spring training. I didn't even know that I was <laughs> in the team, and he already knew it. Right. And I ended up making the all-star team, and, man, talking about somebody that was really good to me, somebody that that, that was him, yeah. Daryl Kyle, not just to me, man, to everybody. I mean, he was just such a great mentor guy. We always used to 
talking the dog out during batting practice uh, before when we were waiting for a stretch and all that when the other team was hitting and just picking, you know, he was picking my brain as a hitter and uh, as a pitcher. He was just trying to tell me, you know, how guys were going to were gonna approach me. Um, but they saw that, man. They saw the, the, the hungriness. They saw that I wanted to get better mm-hmm. and the questions and all that stuff. And they pour into me because they – you know, part of that they knew that I could help this organization. But second of all, they 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 were like that. That was their role. And I believe, you know, that's kinda what my role has been, you know, since so I became a leader, a veteran guys, to make sure, you know, not just to pick and choose the oh, this guy I'm gonna help him because it's the first round and no. Right. I'm gonna help everybody that needs help because at the end of the day, it takes more than one guy to win a championship. Yep. So you had your first, I mean, you tore it up from the get-go. I mean, you, like you said, you rookie of the year and then just kept going, batting titles and MVPs, you know, not too long after you've already been in. Um, so I want to talk about some of those big moments. Um, you get you dabble in the postseason a little bit. 05 was Lidge, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's like an – I mean, that, that's just – that's such a um, – still today – <laughs> if you talk about Albert Pujols and Brad Lidge, everybody knows. In St. Louis, everybody knows. I mean, that like talk like I I wasn't there, but you turned probably forty forty five thousand people totally silent. Yeah, you know, like that was um, on such a national stage too. Like that was a that was probably your. Would you agree? Like your first like major major moment that that is uh, that people point back to and be like, you know that that moment right there. People still talk about. I mean, you had a lot I of mean, big yeah, moments before yeah. that. Yeah, I, I would say so because, you know, you did it in a platform like that, you know, in yeah. LCS, um, you know, postseason, and that's that's when really, you know, everybody you're talking about, everybody's watching on that time, that rival that we have with, with Houston those years too. But I, I would say so, you know, but uh, for me it's like – I look at it as another home run because at the end of the day, they came out the next day and roll right, well right. right here just shut us <laughs> down. So I think it would have been more special if we were end up going to the World Series, you know, that year. But, yeah, it was one of those moments that that's why they hate me right now in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> they used to love me and they used to clap for me. But after the home run, man, they, even churches <laughs> were put in sign. That I wasn't work, <laughs> welcome, welcome in Houston. There. So take Man. me to that at bat. Like what you're going into that bat, you know what Lidge offers, which is nasty. Yeah. I mean, he's got he great was, stuff. He was. So are you sitting on one pitch and waiting for it, or what? I, take me back to that at bat. Actually, bro, I the, the funny thing was, bro, that I I was hitting fifth in that inning, and I normally don't put my batting glove in my bat, dude. Like I I just don't. I really just wait until like I'm either on the hole you know, before I start preparing myself. But there was something, bro, in the bottom of the eighth. Um, and I think for me it was just looking several other young guys. I don't going to mention names, but they were celebrating and thinking mm-hmm. that the game was over. Mm-hmm. And that kind of, like, got me so fired up, bro, and so pissed. And I was like, God, give me another opportunity. I want to make the last out of this team. I want another opportunity, you know. I want another opportunity. And... You know, there come the eighth hitter, then the the pitcher spot, and then Eckstein and Edmonds, and then myself, I was hitting third. And, bro, as soon as I got to the dog, I just had a feeling that I was going to get up. You know, you're talking about you asking God mm-hmm. for something. He delivered to you mm-hmm. right away. And I put my glove down, went right away, bro. And up to this moment, whenever I go to Houston, I sit in the same spot all the time just mm-hmm. to remind me that – I put my batting glove, bro. I grab my helmet. I pull, grab my bat, and I just put the the helmet down. And I was like, I want another chance. I want another chance of this. Then two hours right away, boom, boom, boom. Then next time, um, you know, got the infield hit, and then Jimmy got that great walk. And then here I come. Mm-hmm. This is what I asked for. But for me, it wasn't sitting on a pitch. I knew that he was probably gonna go to his best pitch, which he was the slider, yeah. nasty, nasty, 93 miles per hour, and throwing 98. And he threw it, and it was for a ball, and I swung through, and I was like, you're done. If you threw me this pitch for a strike, <laughs> it's going to be demolished. 
And that's how it was, bro. He threw that pitch, man, and it was like, when I saw it right away, I knew I was going to do damage. Like, it just, it's almost like a slow motion. I was able to, like, wait and wait and wait and wait until I had to attack it. Like, he threw it, and I was such a, like, a really good position to hit. You know, it's just one of those things. But I was, I prepared myself for yeah. that. You know, I prepared myself. I studied videos. Yeah. I, I knew that he was going to go to his best pitch, um, you know, because if you on the mound, you know, you want to get beat by your best pitch. You're not going to get beat by your worst pitch. So I wasn't looking for I was just looking for a good pitch to hit, I guess. But, you know, and I put the best swing on that night, man. And it was pretty amazing, you know, to be able to have 44,000 people <laughs> sharing and happy and all that and celebrating and, man, ruin their party for one more night. It was pretty, uh, pretty awesome. You know, it was pretty awesome. And how loud you played in Houston, yeah. bro. And you know yeah. how loud that place used to be. Like, man, I used to go to bed, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, my ear were mm -hmm. still, like, hearing that killer beat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that they used to play <laughs> and the sun and all that stuff. But, yeah, man, it was it was pretty uh, pretty cool. It so does that cool carry moment. over? Like, when you like the next year when you see Lidge, you kind of have a little smirk? You know, like you just you have that, <laughs> like you know, you own that that yeah. that relationship, right? I well, mean, that, that matchup. The matches. funny thing is that that I didn't own that. He owns that that I mean more. But then the next year, I came in Sunday night baseball. I wasn't playing. I came as a pinch hit. I hit a double and walk him <laughs> off too. Uh, and here in this stadium, so. You know, and then I, when he was in Philly, too, I hit a big homer against him. So, like, things have started going my way yeah. after that, and that's yeah. why they say that, that he got ruined, but the guy was... No, he didn't get up, ruined. Shoot, he yeah. saved 47 yeah. safe, you know, I think, after that. So, yes, success. Uh, I think after the homers, I start having more success against him, but he used to own me big, big time before then. So, but now I, once again... Although I had, as he said, that big home run in 05 and then later on in 06, you know, woke him off here in St. Louis when he was in Philadelphia and then taken deep here. I still, for me, like never took anything for granted. Like I was like, okay, that was then. This is yeah. now. The moment is now. This is an opportunity again that you need to prove and come through. And I'm really good when it comes to that, you know, just try to really slow everything down, slow the moment down and and just really condense everything and just trust the work that you put day in and day out and hopefully execute. Yeah. So 06, that's a special year, right? Mm -hmm. But prior to that, there's a another kid that comes up that ends up having a pretty good career and is still going in Yachty. Mm -hmm. And you guys had, still have an amazing relationship. Um, you know, even in your, in your 10 years of being gone from here, you yeah. guys still, but how, how did you guys connect and then i want to go into that 06 and and you yeah. watching him evolve yeah. on the big stage right i mean that moment for him in new york yeah it was that's huge, his moment bro. Yeah. yeah so for so sure for sure talk about that when when you guys first you know how yeah. did you guys first meet in yeah, the big leagues and uh, no actually we met in spring training you know he was still in the minor league and i remember i was hitting in the cage and he just got down where he's working the minor league with mr rick and and he was coming through his dad and his mom was there um, and I remember his dad came to me when I was down in the batting cage. I was getting ready for the game, I think, and they were just coming in for lunch. And his dad, he's like, hey, this is my little son. I want you to take care of him like your little brother. You know, that's his dad, Benjamin, told me that. Mm -hmm. And, man, that stuck with me. And, you know, two years later, obviously, three years later, he was in the big leagues, and I just started building a relationship with him. Uh, I saw a lot of things that he was doing that kind of remind myself, you know, um, like working, you know, watching video, not taking anything for granted. So there's a lot of things, a lot of quality things that Yari had, still had, that it reminds myself a lot, uh, especially on the younger, my young career. And, you know, I just kind of, took it under my wing and remind those that promise that I made to his father that I was going to do that, you know, helping him and try to develop, you know, the player that he has become. I mean, I give him the credit to Jody, not myself. I was just, just another voice in his life that he decided to listen. But at the end of the day, you had to give the, the players all the credit, the work that they had to put in day in and day out. And Jody did that. 
I remember he struggled his first year. And people were like, oh, I don't know if this kid's going to hit. And I was like, this, I told Tony, this kid's going to hit. This kid's going to be special. And the quality that I look at Jari, I knew that he was going to hit because he doesn't strike out. And when a guy puts the ball and play doesn't strike out, trust me, the guy is going to hit. And he had a really ha good hang and eye coordination. And just the way that he go about it, man, and the attitude and like, you know, hey, I belong here. Uh, it was pretty special. And to be able to, you know, to share together – the accomplishment of winning championship together and just building a great relationship, you know, over the last 17 years uh, has been really special for me. And that's something that, like I say early in this, in the same, and I share forever, man, that's, you know, one day we're all going to retire, but man, those moments and that relationship hopefully last forever, you know, until yeah. you're done on this earth. So, you know, teammates are one thing and every year, uh, 29 teams, break away and we had a great run maybe we didn't have a great run but there's only one that ends up having that unique bond of that championship um, mm -hmm. and that's a special like I, i've been on a lot of teams but that 11 team for us is that's a unique bond that we all share um, and you had that twice you got to mm -hmm. do that in 06 for your first time um, but talk about that season you know going through not being the best team you mm -hmm. know kind of sneaking in in the postseason but then getting hot and man getting getting just getting performances right, guys. by yeah. by guys that you know, didn't have, you know, not household names, yeah. not your superstars all the time that came yeah. out. I think of, you know, Reyes, you know, stepping Ray up. opening <laughs> for Berlander and Reyes, you know. Right. In, a, in a big way. You got yeah. Yachty who comes on the scene, you know, Flores yeah. and, and that bullpen in mm -hmm. New York getting you there. But talk about that team in 06. Yeah, I mean, uh, Taguchi, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, all those guys. Uh, yeah, it was like you say, I think that was probably one of the teams that we probably had more call-ups and different starting pitcher in the history of the Cardinals organization, I think. But, uh, you know, I ended up having a great year that year, too. In 06, I hit 49 homer and drove 130-some RBIs. I mean, but I think we had a lot of those scrappy players, guys that came huge, came out for a week, helped us out to win. Um, you know, remember John Rodriguez? Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. I mean, the guy went he was crazy. on fire when he yeah. got up. Yeah. He got here. He got on fire. Um, but, uh, you know, just those little things that guys, it's just no one, one guy, one or two guys, man. It takes 25 guys plus the coaches, plus whatever you have in the minor league that you can trust to come up here and, and help out a, a ball club. I'm telling you, you can look championship ball club and there's never, never probably a club that has won the championship with the same ball club that they broke camp. Mm -hmm. they, they There's something's always happened that you had to rely on those young guys, rely on those young players to come up and do their job and help us out to win game. And that's what we had. You know, we barely made it to the playoff. We squeezed in, but everybody knew what we have. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that we... And you were we, getting healthy. Yes. Everybody knew that we we have, we have have we can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, with the Cardinals, you know, we kind of like the Yankees in the National League. That's why everybody hates the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the attitude. Everywhere that we walk, you know, we, we belong. We own that stadium, whether it's in New York, whether it's in L.A., whether and it doesn't matter here in Bush Stadium. Like, we own that field and that present, you know, was always tough, you know, through us from 2001 through 2011, through a leader like Tony La Russa, to the coaching staff. I mean, that was the present that whatever field we take, we own that field, no matter where it was. And, you know, we had a, we had a great guys that really step up through, and then we got a couple of trades, you know. Beliar, you know, came out, was huge for us, you know, not just with his, but making some good plays for us. And those are the things, you know, that you have to have. You have to add pieces like that to win championship ball club. But it's, it's really unique, man, because at the end of the day, when you do get the chance to raise that championship trophy, man, it's like, wow, you know. And for me, I enjoyed it, the 06. I enjoyed the 2011, but for me, I kind of 11 and kind of stay back and observe and celebrate from far away the other guys that really never had that opportunity. Yeah. Like the Rafael, but the, uh, the full car, yeah. the hotel, yeah. you know, guys like that. Uh, they never had that opportunity, man. And especially the young guys, you know, it was pretty special. Yeah. You know? Adam Wainwright was a young guy in 06. He was pretty good, yeah. too. Well, Adam, <laughs> Shoemaker, Descarso. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Shoemaker and Descarso were later on in 11. But, yeah, Wainwright, 
you know, was our young cat back then. Big just moments. Like Jad, just like Yachty. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the two of those, to see what they're doing now and to see them come up. Yachty was up a little bit before that, but mm -hmm. to two really years. arrive on the scene together there. I mean, think about that. If you're Tony La Russa and you're looking out there in New York in that moment and you got a, a rookie pitcher and a, a two years, little, yeah. little more than a rookie catcher mm -hmm. yeah. leading that staff up, man, that just says – there's no coincidence that those two are still here doing it now because they mm -hmm. were the right two to be able to do it and carry it. But, exactly. you know, that moment in New York when Yachty hit that home run, similar to the Lidge thing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. just totally silenced the crowd. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. a lot of the players there, especially out in the bullpen, say, you know, that stadium, when it would get so loud in Shea Stadium that it would shake. Yeah. And and they're like, we're out there and it's shaking. And then it was just dead silence dead after silence. after Yachty hit that home run. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy, man. It was just a really, really crazy game. Uh, obviously – by numbers and by papers, I think the Mets were a better team than us. Uh, I guess they were the one they were supposed to, you know, go to the World Series and not us. But at the end of the day, that show is that show you that it doesn't matter. You still need to go out there and perform. Anything can happen in this game, and you know we really, you know, make out some big plays and we got some big hits when we need to and. You know, and they made big plays. You know, Chavez made that play against yeah. Taguchi to Robin, you know, yeah. with a homer. But then later on, you, had to, you know, went deep to give us the lead. It was just pretty amazing, man. And then, you know, the celebration afterward. But then, you know, you celebrate for a couple of hours and then, then you jump on the plane and you know that our mission is not over. Yeah, you got to go to work. You still had to go to work. Yeah. You still had to. And that was always our attitude, you know, that we had, you know, because it's re it was really easy to. Because we can say, oh, yeah, we're the national league champions, you know, but that's not what you want. You mm -hmm. want to be, you know, you want to win World Series, you know, and yep. and that was the that was the goal. So through that stretch, uh, my my first uh, year was '08, and I just want to speak a little on my experience with it. I I knew you from when I was in the minor leagues. We worked out together in the off season, mm -hmm. so I knew you a little bit. Um, and my major league debut is on opening day here in Bush Stadium, and you can imagine all the emotions mm -hmm. and everything, and. And I'm on the mound, and I don't remember anything. I probably was blacked out at the time. But, you know, you came over. Uh, I that. You came over and said <laughs> something to me. And I, and I just, you know, remember being like, what in the world? You know, like, I'm on this field. I can't breathe. You know, my heart's racing. Albert's over here. You know, I don't know even what he said, but he said something, you know. And yeah. so go out there. But it always, I, I'll never forget that moment. Um, and I, and I, I don't know if it got captured on yeah. TV. But if it is, I would like to have it because – like like you were saying to those young players, like I always felt like you were in my corner. Mm -hmm. I always felt like, you know, you you were there for me and, and supported me. And and as a young player, when you're talking earlier, man, I, I feel it. Like I yeah. know exactly what you're saying about like coming up and trying to step on eggshells and go out and perform. And when you know that you have guys that, that believe in you and support you, like you did for Yachty, like you did for all these guys, mm -hmm. um, is huge, you know. Yeah. And uh and so that's something I'm always, you know, thankful for and appreciative <laughs> for that I always felt like you had my back. A funny story, um, our first road trip to Houston, we had three three rookies there. It was me, Rico Washington, and, and Brian Barton, right? Mm -hmm. And so I get on the bus, and Brian Barton and Rico Washington walk in, and they got all these bags. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened here? And they're like, Albert took the guys shopping. And I'm like, well, I'm a rookie. You know, like, I didn't. He, Albert didn't take me shopping. <laughs> so I went to Wayno, and I cried to him a little bit. So Wayno bought me a suit because you didn't buy me a suit. But you you took care of those guys. But, but later, um, another thing I'll never forget – 2011, my daughter's born during the season. And we're shortly after, we're on a road trip somewhere. We have an off day on the road. And you came up to me and you said, do you want to go see your baby tomorrow? Mm. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and you were like, I'm flying home after this. You can go with me. And I got on your plane and we flew home. <laughs> and I got to see my daughter that night and got to see her the next day. And then I showed up the next morning and we flew into Houston. <laughs> yeah, and I was just Toyota. I was just like riding along. I was like carrying your bags, whatever you need, you know. But like we got in the car, they took us to the stadium, and I was like, it, that's I'll never forget that day I got to spend with my daughter. Mm -hmm. But those are the things that people don't realize, you know, that the like you said, the relationships. Yeah. Um the and things just that a are, lot of things, bro, that 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 goes that people don't get to see. They just yeah. see us just go out there and play, man. But when you spend seven, eight months, you know, in the locker room, bro, I mean I mean, there's some moments that you want to punch somebody out, you know, and, like, fight with the guy. <laughs> and it happens but, sometimes. Yeah, it happens yeah. sometimes. But, you know, for the most part, man, it's just the memories, like I say, that we built. And, you know, I did that because I'm sure you hard, you would have done it for somebody. Right. And, and that's the thing, man. Like, I remember, you know, I asked the same question 
to DK one time. I'm like, we were in Philadelphia. He took me shopping. And I was like, what? You know, bought me a bunch of stuff. And, you know, and I asked him, why are you doing this for me? And he was like, because I know your heart. Like the time that I have a spring, and it's only been shortly with you. It's only been a few months of spring training. And now I know that you're gonna do it for other man. Yeah. And, and I remember that, bro. And that and that's for me is is huge. Make sure that I that I pass the same favor, you know, to these young guys because you have to teach these young guys. Yep. Hey, later on you're gonna be hopefully a veteran guys, and you need to remember, you know, how to take care of the young guys. And you know, there's other guys, obviously the you know like to be hard on the rookies and all that for me i always believe the best thing you know is to be respectful um, that's why i don't really you know i laugh when they used to dress guys yeah, up and yeah. all that but at the end of the day um uh, you know you need them to win i feel you need yeah, them to do well and exactly you need them to win. Yeah. exactly like uh, their respect i always yeah. believe like you know you respect somebody so they can respect you and for me that was always been the case you know respect the young players um, respect the rookies, you know, like they belong here because at the end of the day, you know, you don't know what that guy is going to be able to do and and then and then help you out and make him feel comfortable, man, right. you know, yeah, because somebody did it for me. Yeah. So what do you remember most about 11? I mean, what a, what a crazy ride that was. Everything, man, just the way that we went in. But I don't know if you'd remember this uh, in 11. Uh, I always share this story because, like, 0 for 4, I think, 0 for 5, two hit by pitch, three walks in the first two games. I didn't get any hits. We lost game two because the media somehow uh, wrote about it. There was a ball that I should have caught or something, and then we lost 2-1. That ball went to the dog, uh, third base dugout, and it was a bad throw from John Jay. That throw wasn't going to throw n nobody out at the play. And I tried to cut the ball to throw Kinsley out in second base. Uh, but uh, I remember, you know, getting into the plane. We left. We trained the next day, and they were just all over me, you know, because, <laughs> because that error or whatever. It wasn't an error, mm -hmm. but they call it that. I don't know if you remember this, but I think game three, I remember waking up that morning telling Deidre, Man, I feel good today. I'm gonna have a huge game. I'm like, why? Why you? I'm like, I don't know. I just gonna have a huge, huge game. And I remember we used to sit in the back, you know, with the Latin guys mm -hmm. and everybody. And I remember, I don't know if you were in the bus, but as soon as I step in the bus, I told the guys, I'm like, everybody jump in my back today. I got you. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, oh, <laughs> like all pumped up and all that. And that was a huge moment for me because one, I needed it. Two uh, for myself, but two our team needed it because it was yeah. the first game on the road, and so it was yeah. huge. Yeah. Anytime you can win that first game on the road like that, it can give you a, a, a big plus, you know, to put yourself in a good place to to win the series. Um, but that moment right there was was pretty amazing, you know, game one, you know, to be able to hit three homers in that platform score the runs that we did i think we scored 18 runs that yeah. night it was really really amazing but i think what i remember about 11 is you know the guys around man the guys that came out through for us the john the john jay the discarso you know came came in against uh during oliver and get yep. some big yep. hits yep. you know uh matt you know making some mm -hmm you know big pitch become a closer and then you know all that stuff uh you know all that stuff like that you know um you know that's what you remember and you share it. and then now you know you walk into the locker room and you see those pictures yeah. you know the championship 06 and the championship in 11 and it's like this is this is this is why yeah this that's is what why we're after. play yeah. this is why you play and, you know, and it was it's pretty awesome. So that's what I remember, you know, that game, game three, um, celebrating, obviously, yeah. here afterwards. Um, David Fried, you know, stepping huge for us, probably for me. Game six, probably one of the best games that I've been a part, uh, you know, because after kind of theirs has been sucking out at us when Josh Hamilton went deep and to be able to have those guys just back and forth, you know, the John Jay and the Scars are getting some big pinch hits. 
and to be able to tie the game and then later on hit a walk off it was like wow yeah it was pretty amazing it i don't think i ever i don't think i ever gonna be i don't think i'm gonna say ever because i still play the game but for me that's probably one of the best games that i've ever been a part yeah it, any any like i mean i don't want to say jealousy but like you know, when you watch a freeze go up there and have a moment like that, like, is there any part of you that's like, man, I wanted to do that? You know what I mean? Like, cause I, they, I watch guys mm-hmm. that you're in the bullpen with go out there and you're like, man, I want the ball. And you know, like yeah. you talked about, I want to be that guy. Like, yeah, to watch him go through that and know you're the. No, I actually, I actually, I actually was more excited for him, a local kid. You know, just yeah. going to school. You know, Lafayette, I yeah. believe, yeah. and you know, being hometown hero kid was pretty special and. For me, you no, know, I never, I really never look look it up like that because, you know, one thing that I always had learned in the postseason and in the World Series, the MVPs are not guys that you really expecting. Yeah, I'm sure coming in that you think you're going to do it. Although I had a good numbers, you know, to be the MVP and that year in 11 and LCS, I had a good numbers to be the MVP there. I had a good numbers to be the MVP in the World Series, but... You know what? At the end of the day, nobody expecting. Everybody was expecting Albert Pujols yeah. probably to win it, but nobody was expecting Free to win it. Yeah. Or nobody was expecting David Estan to win it. Right. And that's what's huge, man. In the postseason, the guys that you really think that people are really overlook or not thinking anything about it, those are the guys that step up huge for us. Yeah. Um, and get some big hits and end up being the MVP. If you look at it, no, sometimes it's not the big names. It's easy to say, oh, yeah, you know, Alex Rodriguez or Big Papi or Albert Pujols is going to win the MVP. You know, it's always somebody, then nobody. And, and that was his year, man. It was, he had a good NLCS, <laughs> uh, and he has he had a good postseason that year. You know, yeah. I had a great postseason, too. I think I ended up hitting that year 7 or 800 during that postseason there, too. So, but no, I never, jealousy never, I think that's, that's a word that never comes uh in my mouth or in my head because at the end of the day man it's a it was a huge 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 <laughs> and and he deserved it and i'm glad he did else. it i'll tell you that yeah <laughs> nobody else deserved it. and then we, you know you you always have some huge moment like yeah. i have my huge moment you know in game three in the world series yep. you know yeah freezy had it in game six yep. you know so we all got a huge moment. Carp got it in game seven you know yep. and, and all that game stuff. five and then L- and, and lds and Oof. LD, how about that Oof. I mean, to go to Philadelphia and to be Roy Holiday, Roy Oswa, Cole Hammonds mm-hmm. at his pick, mm-hmm. Hap, mm-hmm. I mean, and Cliff Lee. Yep. Really? And Carp and Holiday going at it. Best friends you know going at I'm it in saying, game five. Bro, Oof. like, about For that. For call, lead off I double or triple? Triple, I think. Yeah, it was one and nothing. Schumacher, sack fly, yeah. and that's it. Carp How about in control. that, bro? Oof. How about Man. that? You know what I'm saying? Like, that is that is crazy, yeah. you know, like, to be able to do that. It was, it was meant to be for us, bro. Yeah. But if you look at it, the guys that we had a how we got in that year and then the 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 pitchers that we had to beat yep. to win a World Series, bro, that was crazy. Yep. It was meant to be for us. So so eleven, you, your time ends here, right? And we all know it's all documented. I, I can tell you for me, I was watching MLB network, they're like Cardinals and, and Albert have a deal worked out. And I'm like, all right, sweet. You know, I'm on the team next year. I'm like, I want Albert back. And literally the next morning I wake up and it's like, he's going to Anaheim. And I was like, what in yeah. the world, you know? Um, and, and you know, just, I mean, just touch on that. A bit. I mean, leaving here after the only organization, you know, going mm-hmm. to a fresh opportunity, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a whole, you're something new for you, right? Your whole family's, you're, you're leaving, going to, to Anaheim. Um, but just talk about that, you know, you don't have to go into details of how it went down, no, but just, no, you know, I mean, that transition. Yeah, because there's a lot of things that you're not allowed to talk. I mean, right. those are, you need to respect both sides and my side and their sides. I mean, but I just keep it as short as it is. It just, it didn't work out, yeah. you know, it didn't work out. And sometimes, you know, obviously they had a different mindset and I had a different one and it just didn't work out, you know, and, and we both separate ways, you know, uh, you know, I think. You know, if you had a magic ball, you wish that things would have worked out. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, uh, you know, you have to go through some things in life and make some decision. And you know, I think you know, you know, you guys end up making it. I think to the playoff the next year and the World Series after that. And you know, I I didn't. I only made the one postseason with the Angels. So. 
uh, until last year with the Dodgers. But uh, it's just one of those things that just didn't work out. We didn't just came into turn. We were really close to make it happen, but it didn't happen. But it's just stuff that, you know, you live in the past and, you know, you wish things would have gone different ways. But at the end of the day, I'm back here once again, finish my career where everything started. Another great opportunity, you know, to finish my career with an organization that, that really opens the door, the fans and, and everything else, having a great team, hopefully, you know, having a chance to get into the postseason and, and give our fans, you know, another championship trophy. That's that's my main focus. Did it change for you, anything change when you came back um, with Anaheim here to Bush for the first time in, what, eight years? I mean, mm-hmm. however you didn't – how you didn't come here for eight years, I have no yeah, idea. How about but... that? Like, I played you guys <laughs> – I played twice with the Cardinals in Anaheim. In Anaheim, and I never, yeah. We never came here. But, but when I, you came here in that reception, did that – did that – do you think that opened the door for you to be here now, just the way that, that you were received? And did that help, um, you know, set anything up like, you know what, I do want to come back? Like, did it change no, anything for not you? Not really, because uh, at the end, in the off season, I was made at home here. And people was, just because I was wearing a different uniform, people wasn't treating me different. It was the same, the same love, uh, supporting the, my organization, the Pools Family Organization, supporting my events being grateful for the years that I have here. I like, it's the same thing right now. Like, I, I, I always feel that warm welcome and love, uh, although I was playing somewhere else. Like, I never felt, and that's why we have the best fans in baseball. I never felt like, although I left for those 10 years, you know, to play somewhere else, but I always felt that my heart was always here because my organization, my home was still here. I still have a house here. So, and the way that they are fans and people were treating me here, you know, like I never felt like, oh, I need to get out of here, you know, yeah. I need to leave town. So, uh, no, that decision just came to come back here because, you know, the opportunity came the, at the perfect time. Uh, you know, the call came at the perfect time and, you know, here I am, you know. Um, people ask me, you ever thought that you were going to go back? I'm like, as long as you still play baseball, you always have a chance, yeah. you know, to go back. Obviously, being having the DH in the National League helped big time for them yeah. to bring me back and, and give me this opportunity, you know, and my job here is just help the organization the way that I can when I'm in the lineup, when I'm now just helping guys in the dugout with videos and helping the young guys and mentor the young guys because – they are the future of this organization. So Trout and Otani, I want to ask you about those guys. I, I remember we were rehabbing together in 2012, and and uh, you had, I had asked you, I said, is this Trout guy any good? And you're like, best player I've ever seen. I yeah. said, including yourself? And you said, better than me. Yeah. And I said, really? And you said, defensively, he does things that I've, I could never imagine doing. Yeah. And he said, I'm telling you, this kid's going to be potentially better than me. Mm-hmm. And that was like eye-opening for me but I mean you got to play with them for that long yeah. just touch on those two and then Otani obviously just such a unique talent that yeah. you never you know see in today's game and mm-hmm. um you know talk about those two well trial I guess I was right yeah, <laughs> yeah. when I told you <laughs> um you know just uh really really special player man uh like I say, he's, he's one of the best players that I've seen and I play with uh just every day you know the way that he go at it the things that he does, like, it came to a point that it didn't surprise me yeah. anymore, you know, because it's just unbelievable, you know. And uh, I think, you know, if he stay healthy, he's going to break all the records and be a future Hall of Fame, you know. And just, uh, but I think for Hang, I really compare with myself and the fact that he never took anything for granted. Like, the MVP years, he always wanted to get better and better and better every year. And he was hungry. He was like my little shadow following me around and like doing, you know, asking me questions and, and just always wanted to get better. You know, he's the guy, the best player in the game probably for the last 10 years. And he, there he is asking me questions, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, what? But we had a great, we had a great relationship and, you know, just a really special talent. I think what, what uh caught me the most it was like how 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 he go about things how he care about people um he comes from a great family also they give him a great education man and what you see in the field that's that's who he is yeah. i mean like that's how he is in the off the field like really happy excited 
ready to come to the ballpark every day and, and put that uniform and, and do whatever it takes to to help that organization win. Uh, Otani, man, is something that pff, you're only going to see this. Enjoy as much as you can. Um, don't come and tear his career as much as you can because this is something that you're going to tell your great-grandkids, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't think there's going to be another player like Otani coming through probably in 100 more years. And 100 more years from now, I don't think we any of us going to be here. But uh, Otani, pretty special, man. Uh, pretty special talent. Uh, it's uh, pretty amazing. First year was rough for him to kind of get his feet wet, get to know the league and all that. Second year, Tommy John and Andrews here and there. But he got to figure it out. And, man, it's just uh, you had to play with him and just to see the special. I mean, talent-wise, when you look at it, he's, he's faster than Trout. I mean, a guy throws 100 miles per hour. He's stronger than Trout. Uh, you know, it just, it's just pretty amazing the things that, that he's able to do. You know, winning the MVP last year was pretty amazing. I haven't checked his number this year, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're decent. Well, to, to be that good at both sides, you know, mm -hmm. like it's so hard to be yeah. good at one side, let yeah. alone to be able to put the time yeah. in. I think if I both. was, I think if I was a GM, I'll let him hit. Yeah. The whole time. I think I'm going to benefit more from, from every day, every day, yeah. letting him hit, then taking the chance yeah. of hang while well, making 15 star right. or 20 star and probably blow out and loosen. So I think, but he loves to pitch yep. too. I mean, it's hard to say no to a guy that <laughs> throws 100, 100 <laughs> miles per hour and can win you probably 10 to 15 games yeah. in the course of the season yeah. too. So if he can do that, uh, you know, it'd be pretty amazing. Uh, I just don't know. If he he be able to stay as yeah. healthy to yeah. give you that many star and then also try to be out there for almost well almost every day pretty yeah. much yeah. because I don't think he gets any day off because I think the time that he pitch he also hits yep. so really he doesn't have any time also I think as you know it's a long season it's a lot of work a lot of volume of work not only the work that you put to go out there and perform, but the work that you put before, you know, before stars, before game, before, I mean, it's just a lot of volume of work that yeah. you put on your body. But if anybody that can do his hand, you know, because that's what he's done his whole life. So after this year, what, what do you think your involvement in the organization are you going to be on opening day in a red jacket are you going to be <laughs> you know like those think about those hall of famers that influenced you like i think about getting out of that out of that truck and seeing you know stan, stan and, and red Rish and, and bob Luke. and lou and all those guys and i Bruce know how Luke. important all those guys are to you and stan you guys had a unique relationship mm -hmm. um do you see yourself in that in that role of being being a guy that's here that's around that you know can be a part of that that legacy in that history <laughs> yeah that's a good question because i i really i haven't think as much ahead of me i'm a guy that i don't like to plan ahead i'm, I'm kind of living the moment <laughs> you know and, and and really enjoying today but uh yeah of course i mean that's something you know this opportunity will come hopefully in the future that's that's gonna happen you know i love this organization there's no doubt about it i mean the history that i have here and you know, and just uh, the people, the other people don't get to see. Like yeah. I'm talking about the guys from cleaning your shoes right. to your security guy to our clubhouse guy, the body base, the rip rowing, you know, the Mark Wash right now, the Ernie Moore, you know, all those guys, Craig, I mean, the bad boys, I mean, everybody. I mean, those are people like that I, they're part of my family. And those are people that really, make it easy for me to go out there and perform every day, whether it's cleaning my shoes, getting my bat, or running an air here and there. I mean, just a lot of, a lot of things. So, yeah, there's a lot of history. So uh, I, I have enjoyed, you know, my career here. But I, I really, when that moment comes, uh, I really, you know, hopefully, you know, be there. Uh, but uh, we see what's going to happen in the future. You know? Well, I, you know, you talked about, with Trout, somebody you're going to tell your your, your great-grandkids about Arotani. You know, for me, um, I look at my time here. You know, I played five years here in St. Louis. I got to play with you. I got to play with Yachty. I got to play with mm -hmm. Adam Wainwright, probably the most influential person in my life. Mm 
Mm. Chris Carpenter. You know, I was so lucky. I could have easily come up in an organization that had none of those, none mm. of those staples and those guys. Like, mm. you are one of the best right-handed hitters to ever play the game of baseball. And for me to be able to share that with my kids who never mm. – really got to see me play and explain like I got to I got to play with him for five years I was a teammate of his we mm -hmm. won a world championship together like it's something I'll always um, mm -hmm. it's it's one of the highlights of my career yeah. and, and well, uh, I appreciate it to, to be a part of that <laughs> with you and go through and watch you do that I always tell people all the time they're like what's it like to play with Albert I said I'm gonna tell you right now if you had to go to the bathroom you didn't go when he was coming up <laughs> and I promise you in that stretch of 08 to, to 11 when we were together I said if he would have hit left-handed he could have hit 300 <laughs> you know like you just had that that yeah. freakish hand-eye coordination knew what every pitcher was doing to you there was times where you'd be like he's gonna throw me a slider a fastball in a slider away and it would be a boom 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 and I mean you knew you just you were playing a different game than everybody else and it was mm. fun to watch Mm. Um, and the things I learned through it. So, um, and then for me to be able to sit down and and talk with you like this, man, this is this is such a highlight for me. Um, so I just I appreciate your time mm. over this whole series. I think it's important. This is really why I wanted to do this. When the yeah. Cardinals asked me, I said it's important that people get to see this side of guys mm -hmm. and understand a little bit deeper of you know just what makes you go, what mm -hmm. makes you tick. And 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 you said it a few times. Watching you and Yachty and Carpenter and Wainwright. When you have your superstars, and and you were at a different level than than those guys, right? I mean, you like those guys are. Don't get me wrong; they're super. You were a you were the face of Major League Baseball. You had a different weight on your shoulders than mm -hmm. those guys. But when you have those four in your locker room, and they're all your hardest workers as well. Mm -hmm. If you're a young guy, you got no other option. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, you're talking about doing things the right way. If you're running a ball out and there's a guy that just got called up and he thinks he doesn't have to run a ball out, mm -hmm. well, you're wrong. You know, if Albert's mm -hmm. running a ball out or Yachty's running, like mm -hmm. those little things that you have been so intentional about mm -hmm. make such a difference. Yeah. And, and, and that's why the Cardinals are in the position that they are in now because mm -hmm. you've been gone for 10 years and you come right back and it's still here. That culture's mm -hmm. still here. Yeah. Yachty's carried that. Adam's carried well, and that. Then there the were guys too that, that deserve the credit before me, you know, um, they opened those door and then it goes, you just mentioned then early, you know, the red shining, Luke Brooks, yeah. stand the man, you know, Bob Gibson, Bruce Suter. I mean, all those guys, all the hall of fames, you know, and all the, all the great players, you know, Gene Emmons, you know, Ray Lanfering, the Reggie Sander, all those guys really, you know, it wasn't just one. It was just a great group of guys back whenever this organization started. This is the way that we're going to approach. You know, this is the way, the Cardinals baseball way. And the Cardinals baseball way is a different way than everybody else. Yeah organization out there teach and I think you know that's the mark that we want to leave all, all the time and and it's pretty awesome to see in the although 10 years later I was going I come back here and that's the same attitude man uh, that, that we have in the locker room and it's uh it's pretty awesome but you know the same thing with me bro like you know our relationship is mutual I really enjoy our time um, you know, you help us up to win a championship, and, and those are the moments, you know, that you always uh, treasure, treasure in your life forever, you know, because, uh, you know, just the little things, man, or a word here or there that can change, you know, somebody's career. And I know that somebody did it for me, and that's why I know how important it is. And sometimes it can be a little intimidating, trust me, uh, you know, and um, my goal right now as a veteran guy is being here is just telling these guys is like I'm approaching them because I know sometimes they won't they don't want to approach me because they feel a little <laughs> intimidated or whatever it is. So I, I'm, I have a really good feeling when that happens and I try to approach them and, and just, you know, just enjoy it, man, and just try to have fun. This is my last year. I'm going to enjoy as much as I can and, and really observe and and really thank, you know, the people in every ballpark that I go to that I, that probably a lot of people still work there <laughs> that I probably <laughs> remember. And just, you know, like some of the people here, some are new, some are still here mm -hmm. since, you, you know, one when I came here. And it's pretty special, man, just to come around and just, you know, I can park the car and close my eye and I know how many steps I had to take to get to my locker room. And it's, uh, it was pretty cool. That was a, Cool moment, 
you know, on opening day to be able to get that feeling back, yeah. you know, and just I was like, wow, you know, it was like uh, like yesterday. Like you never left. Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you, you look like you're having a lot of fun. Because <laughs> there I were am. stretches where when we played together, you were dialed in. It was like, all right, I'm going to stay out of his way today. But now, man, it looks like you were having yeah. a yeah. blast all the time. Um, yeah, and it is that pressure, you know. But when you when you get to a team, the, you know, you know the main guy now. Yeah. You know, you kind of like you are the main guy, but on, on a different area. Like now you got the null and then you got the Goshman, you know, and then you got Carson, then you got T.O., then you got, you know, Wainwright, his last year, but then you got Hudson and, you know, Jack, Jordan, and all those young guys, you know, they're the future. Kind of like now, or oh, they're carrying our mm-hmm. way pretty much. Mm-hmm. Now it's like Jody and ourselves, although just because we haven't found that doesn't mean that we're not caring. Right. We, <laughs> there's nobody right, right. in that yeah, right. room that cares more right. than us, you know? But I think it's... At the same time, it's like, okay, guys, it's like I'm passing the baton. You guys yeah. are in charge, you know. And then, you know, my job being back here is that, like, hey, you know, I don't know everything, but if I can help you, I'm here for you, yeah. you know. And that's, that is my main goal. Love it, man. Well, thanks so much for your time on this. I know uh, it takes a lot of your time out to do this, um, so good, you know, and sit down. But really great to, to hear you go in depth and talk about it. I know our listeners are going to love this and eat mm-hmm. it up and uh, – Best of luck to you. Thanks, we'll, we'll stay in touch. And, and like you said, man, it's it's cool to always be connected through that championship. You know, there's a lot of teams, but that we had that reunion last year you weren't a part of. I look yeah. forward to nine years from now when, when you're able to be a part of that next one. Uh-huh. If you're done playing, you might still be. You, <laughs> oh, you no. Yachty, and Wayno might be out there <laughs> getting out of the truck. But uh, no. but I look forward to it, man. And, uh, again, thanks for everything, for the city, for me and my family, everything, man. You've been, you've been awesome. So I appreciate you. Thanks, Roy. Thank you, bro.